Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Chaparoff, and this show is designed to highlight the work of philanthropic leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today with us, a very special guest, his name, Tony Danza. And most of you remember Tony Danza from his role in Taxi and then Who's the Boss? Tony is an actor, TV personality, philanthropist, tap dancer, former boxer, and a former teacher. Let's all welcome Tony Danza. And Tony, it's great to have you with us today. And Tony, before we talk about the virtual event that you're hosting for the Police Athletic League on May 20th, can you tell us a little bit about your acting career? Just what was your favorite role? Well, you know, I've been doing this for now. Gene, I've been doing it for, thanks for having me, first of all. I've been doing this for uh, almost 45 years, I guess, now. It's, it's actually 45 years. And so uh, there's a lot of roles. Uh, I, I, I mean, you know, actually, obviously, Who's the Boss? Very important. Obviously, Taxi is my first uh, big break. But uh, over the years, you know, I've got to, I've gotten luck, I've gotten the, I've been lucky enough to work with some of the really terrific actors, George C. Scott and Jack Lemmon and so on. And so I, I you know, I've been in and out and, and I, I just look at the whole, uh, the whole career and uh, uh, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's fulfilling. It feels good to be still around and stuff. Yes. And I remember who's the boss and you were the father of, or the caregiver or the companion of uh, Alyssa Milano. And are well, you still friendly with her today? Yes, very, very much so. Uh, she's a great activist and a good woman. And and Taxi. She's also someone who, from a very young age, was someone who wanted to leave the world a little bit better than she found it. And she works very hard to do that at, at sometimes great uh, personal expense, both socially and financially. Like you, you do a lot to make this world a better place. And for our audience, we are with Tony Danza, the uh, famous actor. And what most of us don't realize is that Tony has a big role with the Police Athletic League. He serves on their board, and now he's working on an event coming up May 20th for the children in the acting arena. And I want him to talk a little bit about that because it's very, very fascinating what he's doing and it's so important. And he's actually building many, many careers. Well, uh, if, 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 if you'll allow me, I, uh, about five years ago, uh, well, let me go back a little bit further. When I first got to New York in, in 2011, when I first moved back from LA, I wanted to volunteer. So I went to a place called the All Stars on 42nd Street and, uh, and I was volunteering. It was basically a youth development through performance uh, program. And I met a, guy, a gentleman named Brian Hills. And we became very close. And we worked very closely on the program. And, uh, and we developed it. And then uh, a couple of years went by. And about well, four years went by. And I was at Bill Bratton, the uh, commissioners, swearing in. And I sat next to a gentleman. We were talking, and it turned out he was the chairman of, uh, of the board of PAL. And I said, geez, you know, I was a PAL kid. You know, when I was 12, the, the, the cop in the, on the beat in, in East New York and Brooklyn strongly suggested that I give PAL a try. <laughs> and so I did, and I've been around it ever since. And, uh, and I was wondering, you know, how I might get involved with it again. And he said, why don't you join the board? And I, I did. And when I did... I realized what they were missing was what we had at the All-Stars. They have a lot of programs. They serve 30,000 kids in the city. And it's been, it's over a hundred years old, the, the organization. But what they didn't have was a, a, a teen program that changes thinking. They had basketball, they had sports, they had, you know, athletics. They had arts and crafts, they have Head Start, uh, the preschool and all that. But they don't have a teen, they didn't have a teen program that, try to give kids a different perspective and give them something else to think about other than what they're watching and seeing. Because mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, as I think uh, it's very hard for a kid to find a good role model, but very easy to find a not so good role model. And so what the acting program does is give them something else to think about. And so we put this thing together. We went out and solicited to high schools and, um, and just told them it was free, just come, you just have to come. <laughs> 
and they came and we've uh, we've had over a thousand kids in the program we, uh, we we have over 30 going to college we have um uh we do wellness checks we do and and even during this uh, this uh, pandemic we've been able to keep the classes going virtually and serve a, a, just a lot of kids um and it's thrilling because you know, everybody always says, gee, isn't that nice what you do? You do so. No, it's so good for me. You know, I feel so good after we do it. And so um, every year since we've been doing this, we do a big show. It's called The Stars of Tomorrow. And we do this big show at John Jay College on 59th Street here in, in Manhattan. And of course, we couldn't do it last year and we couldn't do it this year. And last year we did a, vir a virtual show uh, for PAL in general. But we didn't actually get to do our show. This year, I was sitting around thinking about it. And I thought, I got an idea, you know, especially because of the environment we find ourselves in. You know, pal, let's be honest, the Police Athletic League, any kind of organization like this that is, is uh, connected to, to the police is then at the nexus of the problem that is enduring in this country, you know, young people and the police, their relationship. And so I just thought, here's a good opportunity, maybe like the Cops and Kids Chorus, to, to not only give the kids a chance to, uh, to, to perform, but to uh, maybe build some, some, uh, some uh, uh, you know, connections between the, the police, some more connections between the police and the kids. And, and, I think and, and it's working. It really is. It really is. I think it's wonderful. I'm hearing two things. First, I'm hearing that you, when you were young, you benefited from the Police Athletic League. You were, um, you were part of it you, and you're giving back to them, which I think is so important in philanthropy. So really you are involved in, in an organization that you've been involved with forever. And then you're providing your expertise, Tony Danzer, in acting and in skill building to young people and I find it extraordinary that the PAL, the Police Athletic League, services or helps 30,000 young children in New York City, and that's in the five boroughs. And that means a lot because that's a lot of children. And, and then you're trying to build a relationship and a better understanding between the children and the police by doing this whole acting contest, which is on May 20th, correct? May, uh, May 20th, seven o'clock. Um, if you uh, are interested in uh, seeing it, uh, you go to palnyc.org and you'll see event and it'll, it'll, uh, it'll direct you uh, how to get there. And, and like I told you, I'm really excited because I, I sort of put the arm on my fellow cast members, members from Taxi, and I volunteered them, not knowing. I figured I'd get a couple of them, you know, if I volunteered them, but they all showed up. So Barry Lou, Carol Kane. Mary Lou Hannah, Carol Kane, Judd Hirsch, Danny DeVito, and Christopher Lloyd are the judges. <laughs> well, it sounds like a great event. And I promise you, I'm going to donate to this. Oh, okay. That's so uh, I love what you're doing. And I think anytime we can change uh, the lives of young people, we have to. Now, Tony, uh, what is the website? I think it's palnyc.org. Palnyc.org. And that's for our viewers who want to donate. And what about they volunteers? Ticket, they can see the show. They can also get a ticket to the show. That's what right. I'm well, I want them to do both. I want them to see the show. And I want, uh, hopefully, people to donate because the cause is so great. 30,000 young people you know, in New York City. Gene, you know what the help. cause is? You know what the cause is as far as I'm concerned? The cause is, is that, you know, uh, we are really... Uh, I think we're, 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 we're having an experiment here with our children. You know, I used to do this joke in my act. I used to say that, uh, you know, I, I love the song, the American songbook. I love those songs, all those songs. I said, I'm a little worried about today's music because I think, geez, we, 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 we grew up listening to nothing but love songs. Love, got to have love, lost love, found love, need love. And look how we turned out. So I worry about what's going to happen if we, you know, if we don't make an effort to, to give our kids not only the, the education and the skills to, uh, to, uh, to, to be successful, but they also need the socialization skills. They need, 
you know, they need, you know, I, I'm afraid that a lot of kids today, they, uh, they get resolution conflict from uh, hip hop videos. And I just, I, I worry about that. And so that's what the, the class is. And, you know, today in New York City, we, they're giving out the McGuire, uh, they're, they're taking applications for the McGuire scholarships, which is, uh, they're named in the, in, in the name of the uh, ex-police commissioner, Bob McGuire, great guy, by the way. And uh, I got a call from one of the people who, is con who are conducting the, uh, the interviews. And they just said, geez, the kids from the acting program are so wonderful. They come in and they have this different perspective and they, you know, they're so wise, they know what's going on. And I just think that's important because what this acting pro program does is not just teach you how to be an actor. It teaches you how to be a person, it teaches you about life. You know, because that's what we talk about. You know, the slogan of the acting program is pal teen acting, because when you teach a kid how to act, you teach a kid how to act. I like that. <laughs> now, Tony, getting back to you, you have a family. I understand you have four children. Well, I, have three, I have three children. Thank yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. And and um, a number of years ago, you actually wrote a, a book about cooking, Italian cooking with your son. I think you did that in, back in 2008. Yes. And are you are you someone who loves to cook? Or was this just a bonding experience? No, no, I, I think I, it's great. I love to cook, but it was a bonding experience. You know, my, my son and I wrote it together. And we what we did was we made a memoir cookbook. By the way, the name of the cookbook is Don't Fill Up on the Antipasta. Because that's what you used to hear on Thanksgiving. You know, the Italians uh, who came to America they really, really wanted to be American. They wanted to, so they wanted to, you know, join it. My father used to talk about joining the team, you know, but they didn't want to give up all their culture, especially their food. And it manifests itself on Thanksgiving when, when Italians really want to be part of America and have this Thanksgiving dinner, but they got to start with an antipasta and a lasagna before they get to the turkey. So what you would say, what you would hear when you got to, uh, to your aunt's house or your mother's house, they'd say to you, don't fill up on the antipasta, you got to finish. But uh, we did this thing together. We, what we did was we put a we put like 50 recipes from our, from our family and connected them with relatives and told stories about the relatives. So it's Uncle John's clams or Uncle Vinny's linguine. And, and the stories, I'm telling you, you know, every once in a while I go back and I, I just take a look at it and it's, it's just really great. There's some amazing pictures of, of early days in Brooklyn and, and, and me as a little kid getting communion or something. But, but it's, uh, it's, it's really was a labor of love and, a, and a, great, a great way to connect with my son. I think so. And if our audience wants to buy the book, where can we find it? I think it's on Amazon, sure. I think great, it's on Amazon. great. Yeah. And Don't fill up on the antibiotics. And what I love about your whole experience is that you took the time to do something with a family member to write a book together, which is a great bonding experience and a part of the philanthropic it's process. Easy. It's not easy writing a book. <laughs> no, it's better. not. No, wow. I've written a book and I know it's a lot yeah, of work. A lot of work. Yes, and, and I'm not going to talk about my book, but we're talking about you right now and that you did it with your son to our audience. Uh, this is a great bonding experience. Anything you can do with a son or a daughter or a loved younger person uh, to, to make them feel important and to, to involve them in your life. I think it's a great thing. And for our audience, we are with Tony Danza, a very famous actor. You may remember him from his role in Taxi, his starring role, and then in his starring role in Whose Life Is This Anyway? And Who's the boss? I'm sorry. Who's the boss? Okay. And uh, Tony is just a wonderful man who's gotten very involved with uh, the Police Athletic League, a group that services about 30,000 children in the five boroughs of New York City. And we're learning a little bit more about Tony. And Tony, as you look back on your life and you're, you've got a long way to go still, and you're a great New York and United States acting icon, what are some of your most favorite moments, things that you really love doing? I assume it's your acting, but I want to hear from you. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm an athlete. You know, I was, uh, I, was a pro I was a professional fighter before I uh, was an actor. 
And so I like to play sports and I like to do, you know, everything that uh, everybody else, you know, my age does. I'm, unfortunately, you know, I did have a big birthday recently and it's a crooked number, by the way. But uh, so I, you know, so I might be slowing down a little bit, but I mean, look, I, I loved my career has been wonderful. My children and, you know, seeing my kids grow up. I have my, I have two daughters and, and a son. Uh, I have grandsons now. I mean, there's there's so much, many more, so many things that are so much more important to me than, than uh, you know, what I did in uh, in Who's the Boss? Even I mean, you know, at, at this point in life, I'm I'm looking I'm looking way forward and trying to, uh, and, and like I said, you know, it's really important to me that that I give back. I I leave. I do something. I I just can't believe that I got this great bit of, uh, uh, of of good fortune and I'm not going to do anything with it you know I should do something with it and that's what I've been trying to do I love that you feel that way and I know that so many of us feel that way that if we've been uh, blessed with resources then we have an obligation and we want to give back because when you give you get it's it's it just makes the difference between a regular yeah, and, life and, and a gee, social not life and it's not only it's not only resources. It's uh, it's the ability the, uh, the, uh, the 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 ability you get to move through things and be in different places and and so you have if you especially if you have some celebrity status you you can make a difference. You can really make a difference. And and as you said earlier, you know if you make a little difference in one person's life, that's a big deal. You know, it's, it's a, a big, big deal. deal. And, uh, and I'm telling you, I wish, I really wish you could have heard this kid, uh, after he got over, uh, uh, taking me to task, uh, how, how he said his life has changed because of it. And it, it was really thrilling to hear. And I'm really proud of the acting program. We, um, we've been, uh, we've been blessed not only with, uh, this guy, Brian Hills, who I work with, I kid you not, he is a kid whisperer. He's like, you know, the most reticent, defensive kid comes in and doesn't want to do anything. But he came and talks to Brian. And two days later, he's he's worried about supporting his ensemble. You know, it's it's really fabulous to see it happen. And Tony, I absolutely love what you're doing. And I'm going to switch to another subject. We've seen a massive defunding of the police in New York City. And now we have a, a race for mayor coming up. Do you think with a new mayor, we're going to see a big change or, or do you think we're going to continue with all the crime that we've seen in the last uh, recent months? Well, I don't, I, I really, I, I don't really know, Gene. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure there's a lot of candidates. It's pretty hard. I watched the debate last night. It's pretty hard to, to zero in on anybody. Um, no, I look, I just think we're all struggling with this, uh, with, with, with what we've been going through. Uh, for almost a year and a half now. The uh, pandemic. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And and I think uh, there are a lot of people who are very unhappy and there are a lot of people who are hungry. There are a lot of people who, uh, well, and we have a lot of people who have problems. You know, I'll be honest with you. I was in isolation now, like, what, 13, 14 months. I've had some crazy thoughts and I'm not crazy. So imagine if you're crazy how you might be right now. So I am a little worried about going forward, uh, but I think we, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that it's, it's all going to calm down, especially here in New York. Yes. Well, this pandemic has been really tough on a lot of people. And, and, and then we've seen um, a, a, a big push for racial justice in, in our country. And I know it's important to me and I'm guessing it's very important to you. And any thoughts on that? Well, I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's what we do with this, with the, uh, you know, we're working mostly with kids of color. And so we're trying to uh, um, both be a, a guide, uh, a, a shoulder to cry on, uh, uh, because sometimes these kids run into st tough stuff too. I mean, it's, it, it, look, you know, it's, it, we, ha we, are, we have a country that unfortunately this is uh, the original sin and uh, it's, we're going to, we'll struggle to get, until we get through it, we're going to struggle. Thank you very much for all you do for so many young people in New York City. And then for all of those who listen to you in, in this broadcast and in and, and all the interviews that you take, because you are 
one of our great icons and you are taking your life and doing a lot of good for many, many people. So I have to thank you. And thank Tony, you. what advice do you give to a young person interested in an acting career? Well, you got to study. Number one, you got to study. It's something that I did late, unfortunately. I wish I would have done it earlier, but you got to study. You have to really, really want it more than anything else. And then you have to believe a couple of things. One, you have to believe that nobody can do what you can do. You can't do what anybody else can do, but nobody can do what you can do. And if you really believe that, that gets you over a lot of, a lot of the, the nervousness. And the other thing is, is that when you do get a chance to perform, don't think of it as anything but a gift, because that's what it is. When you get a chance to get up on stage, to be in a play, to sing, to dance, that's a gift. And you, you should really, really enjoy that while you have it. And that's wonderful advice, Tony. And Tony, finally, I'm going to ask you one last thing. You're doing all of this work for the Police Athletic League for the 30,000 children of New York City that the PAL supports. And as you look back, I'm guessing that this is one of the most important things you've ever done in your life. And, and do you want to comment on that? Well, yeah, uh, I, I do think it's really, really, really important. And I think that it's important that it would be great if, every, if more people were interested in leaving, you know, just trying to help. You don't have to do much. You know, you can mentor a kid. You can, you can, you know, volunteer at a, at a, at a PAL center. You, there's there's a, a million ways to do it. Um, you know, the acting teachers that we have on the program, you know, they're all, te they're all kids, that, they're all young people who, would, who aren't able to write a check, so they, they give their service. Um, and so it's, I just think, I just think, especially now, we need to come together and, uh, and maybe coming together means helping other people. No question, helping other people is, is, is a gift. And for our audience, you can become a philanthropist by donating, donating your time, your resources, and then available money, and also your knowledge. And in the case of Tony Danzer, our guest today, Tony is donating all three. He's donating his knowledge as an actor. He's donating his time. And I know for a fact he's donating his resources. And so Tony is what we call a true philanthropist. And remember, if you don't have the resources, the financial resources, well, you can give your time and knowledge and never ever underestimate the value of your knowledge and your time. Believe in yourself, get out there, support an organization you like, and you'll become a philanthropist. And you'll feel great. I'm telling you, because it's when, it's when you do something like this that Everybody goes, wow, it's so nice you did that, but it's, it's always really good for you. Tony, thank you very much for being with us today. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today, Tony Danza. He's the actor, TV personality, former tap dancer, former boxer, former teacher, and a true philanthropist. If you want to donate to his charity, Police Athletic League, the website is palnyc.org. I'm Jean Schafferoff, your host. I'll see you next week. We have our Cops and Kids Chorus, where police officers and students come together to write songs and perform them. This was remarkable. Working with these children, the energy, the bond that we have now, like, like these kids, I'm going to be connected to them forever now. I definitely learned a lot from this experience and working with the police officers and music all together was just totally great. This is a project where um, 26 participants, um, 15 teens and 11 NYPD officers are coming together over the course of eight weeks to write original music. I 
I just am so thankful for this experience and to be able to be hands on. We wrote a song together, we wrote a melody. It was just amazing. It's such a great experience for anyone to be part of and I'm just so thankful that I was able to do this. PAL has tried to really leverage and expand our interactions with the police and our young people. Over the last year in particular, we've looked for more and better ways to do that. The program is important now given so much that has been going on in the country, so many things that the young people themselves have been seeing. Allow the young people to have an opportunity to see the officers as human beings, not as the enemy. You get to know each other. And what better way to do that than the arts? With the Police Athletic League, it definitely gives us an opportunity to get close to the kids on an outside of the work environment where we can all just be ourselves. It's not something that you can get for free anywhere else in the city. Not like this. They, they literally made it possible for us to go and perform in Carnegie Hall and be surrounded with all this love and positivity and worked with us for weeks on ideas that were in our minds. They were actually like nice real people. <laughs> I've been working with Nadia a lot and she is one of the nicest people that I've ever met and she's very kind too and I mean she kind of acts like a mom and you know I'd never thought I'd get something like that from a police officer. The New York City PAL Cops and Kids Chorus. And the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air. And the hum, the hum, the red. Here is the New York City Cops and Kids Chorus. I see some of these kids now, it reminds me of myself the way I was when I was in PAO, you know. The same things that I learned in PAO, I carry on in life. It's the last round of the championship, so we're gonna give it our all for the kids. We're playing hungry. I don't know much about it, but they look good. Shoot!